Hey, welcome. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're almost done here. I'm going to flip back to the New Testament after this book, but we're going to look at verses 1 to 6 here in chapter 30. Let's read them. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Now we'll carry on with this tomorrow morning, because David's not done yet. But I like this last line here. The people are ready, some of these band of 600 guys with uh, their families, some of those guys are ready to kill David. Um, David was, this is kind of not, not fair, but anyway, that's the feeling. And David, in spite of kind of being alone here and singled out as the, the bad guy, the source of this trouble, the, uh, David strengthens himself in the Lord as God. And he's going to do, like I say, we'll pick this up tomorrow morning. There's some things David's going to do. This is something about David we're going to learn that uh, over and over, that he seeks to find God's will. He wants to understand what God wants him to do. He's, he's pretty diligent most of the time in seeking for that. Uh, but right here we have this case where the everybody is is weeping and they're in a frenzy and they're in cra they're crazed their children have been taken away their wives have been taken away their stuff's been taken away and there's somebody to blame and you know what we always want to blame the leaders well sometimes sometimes you know the real problem is among the people not so much among the leaders but uh, being a leader that's just kind of part of the way the kitchen is laid out if you're in the kitchen you may be um, subject to the heat of the kitchen. I think that in our adversity, we need to be strengthened by God. Even when we feel abandoned by the people around us, God can strengthen us. When we feel utterly alone, and sometimes in your service to the Lord Jesus, you will feel utterly alone. You'll feel misunderstood, uh, not appreciated, not valued, and you'll feel totally alone. You'll even begin potentially uh, You'll feel so alone, you'll begin to wonder if you're being led by God. But you know what? David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. That's really the, uh, the money line here. What we need to do is when we're subject to potentially despair and hopelessness, don't go there. Don't go there. Instead, turn to God. Turn to God. Strengthen yourself in the Lord your God. When you feel, feel uh, very troubled, strengthen yourself in the Lord your God because you're going to find hope and a path when you turn to God, you'll find a pathway through your trouble out to the other side. So be strengthened in the Lord your God when you come into these emergencies, and he will take you through. And let us now pray. Dear Father in heaven, uh, David has come upon the city smoking and burning, and everybody's gone, and they're ready to stone him now. There's a lesson there for us. Help us, Lord, not to be overly subject to the feelings of others that are around us that might be irrational or crazed. Instead, Lord, help us to turn to you. That's the rational thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Help us to be strengthened in your ways and to look to you. You have a pathway through, even from uh, the most apparently darkest times. So bless us now, Lord, and let us turn to you in all these kinds of emergencies. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you turn to the Lord God in, in your big moment of darkness and emergency? Or will you run around like a chicken with your head cut off, uh, not gathering in any spiritual help or hope? I hope not. God has your hope. God be with you today.